Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we are going back to our big plastic pile and building a spaceship. This time a Mobius Models Discovery from the critically acclaimed movie 2001. Well, that's sort of true. While the kit is based off of Discovery from 2001, we are actually going to be building the 2010 version instead because I find that one just a little bit more interesting to model and paint. For those that don't know, 2010 is where Sheriff Brody goes to Jupiter to kill space sharks and John Lithgow practices for his next upcoming role in an adult porn movie. With this build, I'm going to do something I've never done before. We are going to add a motor to this model and make it spin just like seen in the movie. So let's see what happens. Mobius model makes two different discovery models. We have this, the 350 scale version, which comes in at around 17 inches and then a massive three foot version. This one comes in at over 200 pieces thanks to 10 bajillion cargo containers. Uh, we have a few metal pieces, including a metal support rod that goes down the length of the ship and a few metal bits to hold the ship up and clear parts, obviously for windows. Most of the build of this kit went fairly smooth. As usual, I'm just gonna point out little tips or errors that I made so you don't make the same, but I built it in sub-assembly, so basically the front of the ship and the back of the ship, and it kind of left the center till the end. Uh, don't forget to paint the window frame black before inserting that. That's about the only thing you have to paint uh, pre or sub-assembly. Now the cargo containers is where the nightmare begins. There are five different cargo containers on the ship and you have to build anywhere between 10 to 20 plus of each one. So this took up the most time. What I did was build one of each type at a time and you can see I have little baggies that I would put the pieces in to keep them separate because if you get them mixed up, you're not gonna be able to tell them apart. Trying to get the engines to line up evenly was a huge pain in the butt until I realized I can just use gravity uh, as a tool. So I just put them flat on the desk and then I adjusted them until they were all even and worked out pretty well. The kit comes with a support rod that runs down the center of the ship, which is notoriously bendy. I'm going to need something much stronger for this build, so I replaced it with stainless steel 1.5mm by 300mm rod. To make sure it fit down the length of the body of the ship, I glued the two pieces of the shaft together and then I worked the rod through to uh, make sure it would fit once everything was dry. So I just stroked it back and forth and I really wish I didn't phrase it that way. Putting together the center section of the ship was the scariest part. You do have little tiny tabs to line up, uh, but they're not really enough to make sure that everything is perfectly straight and even. So uh, check all your positions, make sure that all the tabs where the cargo containers go are uh, even as you move down the ship, because if you screw up this step, it's gonna be really obvious once you start putting all the cargo containers in place. Gluing on the cargo containers, again, was a huge pain in the butt. Uh, there is a map in the instructions telling you exactly which letter goes where. Even with that, trying to get them all lined up perfectly and also in the right direction was very difficult. Uh, there is a little picture in the instructions, but after a while I realized it wasn't that accurate, so I just kind of eyeballed it and put pieces in the direction they should go. If you put them on the wrong way, you'll notice it like one cargo container sticks out more than the others. So just be careful, cautious, and take your time at this step. Now for the really scary part, I'm gonna grind a hole into the exact center of my ship using a Dremel and a steel cutter. This is gonna be where our motor is going to attach and for our uh, shaft to attach to the motor, 
decided to use an Allen key and uh, really happy I came up with this idea because Allen keys are very strong steel. Uh, they're also hexagons, so they're going to attach to our coupler very well. So I just had to glue it in place, pray that I had it straight on, and then I puttied it with epoxy putty to make sure that it would not move because there's going to be a lot of torque on this part. Now let's put together everything we need to make this sucker move. First thing is a miniature high torque motor. This is variable speed, variable volts. We're gonna be running it at three volts using two AA batteries. Three volts will give us nine RPMs. We need a coupler to attach our ship to the motor, and we need a button to turn the power on and off. We also need a box to hang this thing on the wall and to hold all our electronic bits. For that, I am using an eight inch shadow box. Normally I use picture frames for this, but I needed something a little bit deeper to contain all the electronics. The first step is to drill a hole in the center of the glass for the motor shaft, something I've never tried before. There are bits that you can get for drilling through glass and you can drill through in about 30 seconds or you can do what I did and try using regular bits and take about a half hour. Well, at least I saved myself $5. Next thing to do is to solder everything together. If you don't have any experience doing this, don't worry, this is extremely simple. I'm sure you can handle it. We only have two wires and we put the switch somewhere on one of the wires between the motor and the batteries. We also need our picture of Io and or Jupiter. I found two different ones online. You can get pictures from NASA for free and I just took them to the local drugstore to get them printed out at the proper size. To put everything into place, I am using hot glue. Also, I added a sheet of styrene because I didn't want to glue things to the back of the photograph. So just hot glue our motor into place, hot glue our battery pack, uh, you can hot glue the switch if need be, mine slid right into place, and we're all good to go. With that, we have our finished mount for our spaceship, but Oh yeah, we still have to paint the spaceship itself, don't we? Let's get back to that. We're gonna be going yellow ochre for our paint job because the white ship is supposed to be covered from dust from the moon Io and giving it an even yellow tone. To begin with, we are starting off with our primer using Badger Minotaur Gray Primer via our airbrush. Next is a coat of Vallejo Game Color Earth, and this is meant to be a shade layer for our yellow. I wanted to make sure that I had a darker yellow color uh, in the recesses, especially around all those cargo containers. I didn't want any gray showing, so this is for the recesses. Also, I did a little bit of ghosting on the larger part, so we get just a little bit of variety to the yellow. For my yellow, I'm actually using Vallejo Model Color Gold Brown. It seemed to be pretty close to the color used on the uh, ship in the movie. This is a fairly even coat, uh, leaving a little bit of the earth showing here and there, but the ship is supposed to have a smooth, even uh, coating of dust, so uh, if we want to be movie accurate, there's not a whole lot of variety we can do here. We just want straight yellow, and that's it. Just as a note, uh, it's been a while since I read the book, but I believe in the book the dust is uh, referred to as orange, but in the movie it's definitely yellow. So we're doing the movie version, not the book version, but you, know, you can go a little bit more orange if you like and still technically could be accurate. I had no intention to do any shading or panel lining on this ship because it is supposed to be a coating of dust. It's going to get into all the nooks and crannies everywhere, so we shouldn't have panel lines. However, the ship just felt undone without doing something else to it. So luckily I had an old bottle of MIG Neutral Wash, which is a grayish brown wash. I just covered the entire ship and it gave us a little bit more variety to the yellow and darkened all the recesses a little bit. And I just smeared all this on, didn't even wipe it off, and it gave a nice tone to the ship. So 
made our gold brown, i.e. yellow, uh, just gave it a little bit more of a, a pop. After letting the enamel wash dry overnight, uh, time to add our matte varnish, Vallejo, Vallejo matte varnish for that. And I also added a tiny drop of game color bone white as well to give a little bit of a dusting coat. And in case you're wondering why I'm not using pigments on a ship that is supposed to be literally covered with dust, well, I would like to, but this is going to be out in the open in a room where it's going to get dusty. So I didn't want pigments on it because that's going to be a lot harder to clean off as the years go by. Final thing to do is to attach the ship to the base and using a 5mm to 2mm coupler for that. A little bit bigger than I would like, but it's the size that I needed. So all you have to do is just tighten the little screws with an Allen key and you are good to go. I do plan on eventually painting this black so it's a little bit less visible. However, right now, since we're building something that moves and it's my first time, uh, I didn't want to paint it and then get it all scratched up if I need to make adjustments to the motor or whatnot uh, as time moves on. So I'll paint that eventually. And there is our finished ship in all its very long and static glory. Looks pretty good, just static, but the whole reason we did this is so we can get it to move like seen in the movie. And then this is how it looks with power next to Harpo Marks. Don't have a place to mount it just yet, so this is a temporary setup. So there you go, my first motion model, and it actually worked. I am so happy. It's an extremely simple build, and also our electronics that we added were fairly simple as well. When we combine those, uh, we come up with something very unique and interesting, I think. Two things to note, there is a slight stutter in the spin, which I quite haven't figured out what that is yet. Uh, it could be a fault in the motor itself, maybe a bad tooth. It's not the weight, because it does it if the ship is placed on a table as well. Now the weight of the ship is bending the styrene that the motor is attached to, so I had to add some support rods so uh, the styrene doesn't bend as much and support rods push against the back of the shadow box. Uh, I would like to use something a little bit stronger than styrene, but the shaft on the motor is so short, I uh, couldn't figure out what to use that was would be thinner yet strong. Something else I didn't think about was placement of the model. On my paint desk, my yellow looked very bright, but I forgot it's going to be placed in the middle of the room where the lighting is not the best, so the yellow looks much darker here than it did on the paint desk. Uh, I should have compensated for that and gone for a lighter color yellow, and using the wash that I wasn't planning on using also darkened it more. So. Next time, I'll definitely go for more of a pale yellow color than our gold brown. But at any rate, I have a nice motion model now, slash cat toy, and this thing is not going to last with two cats in the house. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Well, it's the end of the world as we know it, and actually, I feel a little bit gassy, but otherwise, I'm fine.